Hello! Hi everyone! <laughs> How's everybody doing? Also, let me know if my volume is okay. Volume check. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Je Jessie's taking a break for today, so she passed the torch. Passed the torch to me. But you might see her in chat later, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, she did mention she might, you know, come come join for a little bit and say hi in chat. So be on the lookout for that as well. So yeah, volume's good. Alright. Sounds good. Nice to see lots of excitement in chat. Hey, hey, hey. Lots of fire puns. Okay. Yes, keep an eye out for Legendary Jesse. Oh, show. In Easter egg. Easter egg hunting. Hey. So I guess now that I have everything pretty much set up, uh, I guess I will officially start, you know? Uh, welcome to... Look at this stream, and today we'll be doing Rendering Fire, but you know, before I continue on to our topic at hand, um, I want to remind everybody that our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds, and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links in our social media in the description below. Then check out our website for class offerings, so you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors, because we're not just a YouTube channel, we're an art school too. If you'd like to support us so we could keep making free content, consider supporting us on Patreon or on YouTube as well um, for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you could get tons of uh, perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a discount on our classes that have limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they're gone. So yeah. Yo, yo. <laughs> Thank you. I'm always flattered when people say they love my voice. Oh, Jesse be in class? Um, I don't think so. I think I'll be subbing as well, actually, for classes. Yeah, she's taking a nice long break. You know, she's worked hard. And everybody deserves a break, you know? So, yeah. Just as a heads up. So, yeah. Guess we could get started. This is my little doodle. Get this out of the way. Yes, a well-deserved break, faux show. And let me grab my handy dandy notes. So anyway, as I was saying, you know, today's stream will be learning how to draw fire digitally. And I want to share my process and techniques to really make our flames shine bright. And to showcase the techniques, uh, we will be drawing a mage casting fire, which won the poll. And it was a really close one, actually. And actually, before I forget, we were supposed to do features, actually. Hold on. I do features first before I do the thing. Keep forgetting we have to do that. So, today's, uh, or this one's theme is actually March of the Robots. So, lots of robots. And these are submissions from our Discord for those who are new, by the way. And every month we have a theme. And I pick out a handful, and they get featured in every Friday stream. And first up, we have Az's uh, robot here. I think it, this is a really sick robot design. And they said that, you know, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So that's the little, little snippets that they had with the, with the robot when they shared it. I know, right? The rendering, I think, is what really caught my eye here. I really love the rendering. And even if you take away the the rendering and all the, the fancy techniques, it's still a really good design because of all the nice, neat shapes. Because when I think of robots and futuristic stuff, I think of sharp edges like this one. So this is perfect. Oh, you've never learned traditional. How I learned drawing digital. <laughs> well... Hmm, that's a good question. I guess some of your skills from traditional do carry over. So, you could do it with mouse if you really wanna, or you get a tablet. Yeah. Temple and fishing. And what else can I say about this one? It's also detailed enough that it's not really distracting, which I really love. 
like they knew when to stop with their design which is usually a hard one it takes it's one of those things where you just have to know you know like you have to experiment with different designs and then you just figure it out and i think this is perfect so yeah good job as i love it and then next up we have um i hope i'm not pronouncing your name wrong <laughs> above our camera and this is la gritura that's what they posted. This is the El Wee Wee Lucky Dura. It's really cute. And I really love it because, you know, we got like a four legged robot and it's nice and painterly in contrast to the last one. It's it's closer to the way I like to draw. I, I don't really like drawing line art too much, but uh, I do love uh, drawing like this. You know, it's nice and painterly. And we got some nice oranges, you know, it's as if it's under the, it's basking under the golden sun. It's so nice. And thank you. <laughs> the reading chat. Aztec, but with technology. Yeah, I could totally see that because of like the, the mythology, I guess, like the designs they have. I could definitely see that now that you mention it. Pretty Aztec. Yeah, the blue is a nice touch because... It's pretty complimentary, you know, even though it's not a perfect blue, it's slightly like orange. It complements like the warm, warm tone of everything. It's so nice. I love it. And what I love about this is, in contrast to the last one, the last one was like super detailed, right? Everything was crystal clear, nothing was left to your, um, nothing was left untouched. But for this one, it's nice and painterly. And you could sort of fill in the blanks yourself, you know, it's not hyper detailed, but it's detailed enough, you know, it's like the classic way of painting, which I really love, personally. So yeah, thank you, Bev, our camera, very nice, El Wee Wee. Beep. And then the next one, got the dinner bot. This is the dinner bot from, let me see, Bread Panda. And I really love this one because it... It really has the 50s aesthetic to it, you know, it has like the stripes and it has the classic rubber gloves that you would see like Mickey Mouse wear back in the day. It's very, I wouldn't want to say 50s, but like that type of era, you know, like the diner sort of aesthetic, which is really nice. And I like the little touch of the microphone on the bow tie. It sort of reminds me of those drive through <laughs> the drive through thingies. drive through speakers, that's the word. <laughs> yeah, very 50s. Yeah, and what else do I have to say? Even like the classic, the arms with the, the bendy wire. I really like it. It really screams like classic, classic robot design. And yeah, very nice. I love it. Thank you, Bread Panda, for submitting. And our next one, we have I see Ovi. I I never know how to pronounce your name, but I know you're in chat. I saw you. I saw you in the uh, chat there. This is very nice. I really love the triangular shapes. All the really, um, how do I describe it? It's very sleek. You know. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> uh, it has this nice finish, or not finish, shape to it, where it's very edgy, very inorganic, and it looks cybernetic, you know, just because of all the, the triangles you put down there. And even though it's all cybernetic and inorganic, you took inspiration from, if I were to guess, stuff like insects and bugs right there, which uh, I really love. It's very creative. And I do want to say I see, I see Ovi. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Or is it I see Ob? Um, I do remember you shared in the OC submissions. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think you posted the axolotl character, like the neon colored one. That was really nice. Yes, I see. Ob. <laughs> but yeah, it's a wonderful design. And thank you for submitting. Very nice. And then last but not least, we have Nocellus Garbaggio. You know, he is a garbage pickup robot who can feel tired. 
That's kind of sad. Like, why would you program being tired into this robot? <laughs> like, he already looks so tired. Where is he going? You know, like, people go to trash cans, so... I guess... Why does he have to run? Hmm. Suffering. <laughs> well, I hope Garbaggio has a good day. Someday. But right now, he looks pretty tired. <laughs> I know... They use like the classic number number name, Garbaggio. But yeah, thank you for all the submissions. And I'm pretty sure next week when Jesse comes back, she will do a feature again. So be sure to do submissions on the Discord. So yeah, we'd love to see them. Doop, doop. And so now that we have that stuff featured, now we could formally get to the main course which is how to render fire. And I do want to list down some stuff here. I want to talk about our little itinerary. So I want to talk about properties of fire. And then I want to also talk about the source. And then I'll, go I'll give you general tips and tricks, I guess, as we go. Actually, beep, beep, and then. I know, yeah, I, I forgot to change it honestly, <laughs> but we'll change it after for sure. Draw fire using straight lines. Well, I'll show you some tips and tricks. So, properties of fire. So, to me, fire is very erratic and lively. So the last thing you'd want for your fire is for it to be like um like a basic shape unless you're doing a candle light like this one so let me do an example so unless you're doing like a fire that's coming from a candle or any sort of thing fire fire wouldn't be this calm you know usually fire would be lively so i'm gonna try to draw try to draw like s shapes you know like this one or maybe i shouldn't start with the the layer mode actually so if i were to draw a basic flame like this one but it wasn't coming from a candle say it was from like a campfire or whatever whatever source which I will talk about later. You know, the source is really important for defining our fire. So you can see here, it's very lively. You know, I use lots of S's and lots of curves to really make our fire lively. Deep, deep. And I got it. Check chat. <laughs> kind of looks like hair. Yeah, in a way it does. That's why lots of artists like to use fire hair, I guess, as an example. So right there. And another note, this is a perfect time to mention it. Fire always goes up. So no matter what, fire will always float upwards. It's just a characteristic of fire. So for example here, Let me draw on here. So say we have a torch, you know, that was upside down, like this one. Beep. So even if it is upside down, the fire will still go upwards like this. So no matter what, the flames will always go upwards like this. And right now I'm just using, you know, really basic shapes. So we'll get to all the special effects to make it shiny later on. So yeah. That's very important to remember. Because I do notice that for some students, they like to do it in... Uh, hmm, like it goes downwards somehow. I've seen it before. I'm trying to remember how they did it. But no matter what, it should always be like this. Or even like something like... Maybe say... This is the torch. Or like a piece of firewood maybe. So it's tilted, it will always go up, like that. Boop, boop. 
Yeah, because for me, I'm more of an observer. Um, I'm sure you could like find the explanation as to why, you know, the specific scientific uh, reason as to why, but for me, I, that's just what I observed. I forgot the, the uh, scientific reason as to why it does always go up. And then, I guess I'll give another example. You know, I will give a demo on how the shape shape of the fire is affected by what's burning, I guess, now that we have it started here. So I'm going to try to demo it. I'm going to try to demo it by drawing a cube and a spear. So right there. So I'm going to draw a cube first, right here. Beep. So let me show you how I draw my cube. Beep. And the brightest one. Right there. Or... Beep. And then... Bump, bump, bump. Bump, bump. Right there. Nice cube for us to demo on. And yeah, I'll make it bigger. And then now I will draw a a spear. There's another example. Or that's why it's a lot of transparency. Spear. There. Here. Yeah, how fire interacts is definitely important. And I will talk about it later more. So worry not. It's just that this stuff is also important, you know, because I like to tell everybody. To like tell my students it's always the the subtle details that add a lot to your to your drawings and i want to be on the same page you know with everybody and so now i'm gonna try to demo fire on this one and notice for me actually notice that i'm drawing fire two ways there's one where i draw it with solid color and then one where i rely on layer modes and I will talk about the difference later on so worry not and so right here think of fire like I mentioned earlier it's very lively right it's very erratic so in this one it's kind of like climbing up so what I've observed from fire is that you know like we mentioned earlier it always goes up it always tries to and so now I'm gonna do it on the corners here so I'm gonna put this this cube on fire. There. <laughs> right there. There. It's just a trait that I've noticed. And as you get to the tips of the fire, it actually fades, you know. So that's why the middle part of the fire is always the brightest. And notice that it's slightly, you know, it's slightly fading at the tips right here. I set this cube on fire pretty much. Barbecued. Yeah. Yeah, heat rises, but I don't know the specific uh, scientific reason as to why. That That's more what I meant. <laughs> but... Doop, doop. And where was I? Alright, here's another tip. So, I mentioned that fire... It fades at the tip, right? So you could grab an airbrush. Or some sort of, like, soft brush. You can sort of soften up the tips right here. And then I'm going to grab a hard eraser. So try to balance your hard and soft edges. This is just a general tip for any drawing. Because look, if it was completely soft, you know, it's fine. You know, it serves its purpose. But adding like hard, hard lines, it just, uh, it gives it more definition. You know so now i'm gonna add like the the fires splitting off right here Beep. so this is why i like to work with soft first and then add the hard edges after it just has a nice finish to it and then right here so the little fire that splits off right right here what i like to do is i overextend the fire and then I sort of trim it like that with an eraser. And then I try to make it look more organic and not look like it was uh, cut, you know? So 
add some shapes to it, like that. Like that. It's starting to take shape here. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, it fades at the tip. So I will try to soften the tips a little bit right here. Just like that. Yeah, and this is what it looks like when you rely on layers too much. So I will show the other version later on of uh, actually painting in your fire. So this is not necessarily wrong or the objectively right way, but this is one of the ways. And I will show the other way later on. Yeah. Exactly. And you don't really need a, uh, what's it called? A fancy brush. All you really need is an airbrush and a hard brush. And I should read chat. Let's see. What is chat saying? Looks like lava. <laughs> yeah, hard and soft edges, it's what they sound like. So, you know, hard edges is when you're shadowing. Say I'll shadow this uh, circle here. This is a hard edge, right? Hard edge shading. But if I do it softly, it'll look like this, you know, soft edge. Right there. And then let me edit the fire a little bit. Bloop, bloop. And like I said, fire at the tips is kind of faded. So I'll sort of soften it up with my airbrush right here. Just like that. So this cube's on fire. <laughs> and now I'm going to do a contrast with a circular shape. And notice when I started off, right? I'm hugging the shape because fire, it's, uh, it tends to cling to like the shape of what it's, uh, what's on fire, you know? Or maybe on this one, actually, I'll show you the different method right here. So this time around, uh, let's see, before I continue, gotta see chat. Doop, doop. All right. <laughs> I never drew a s'more, me neither. I mean, there's never, an occasion, I guess, where I had to draw some more, but yeah. And so I'll show a different example. So right here, I'm just gonna draw it manually. You know, it's not, it's not really relying on the the layer modes yet. But like right here, and then I'll add the yellow myself right here. And so the reason why yellow tends to be the middle part of fire is because the middle part, like we mentioned, is the brightest, right? And on the color wheel, if you look here, red is right down here. And then if we want to go brighter, we go to yellow. And so that's why it tends to look yellowish in the middle right here. So this method, it takes a lot more work for sure, but... It has a lot more control, and personally, this is how I would do it if uh, I was doing like a real new project like that. Doop. And then I'll fade the tips a little right here, and then fade. I'm gonna soften it up a little like there. Then I should add the little, I don't know what to call them. I call them splinters, but <laughs> yeah, you know, it's really hot. So it's blue at the center or when it's entirely blue, that's how, you know, it's like super, super hot right there. <laughs> well, we're glad to help. So yeah, be sure to comment stuff because um, we do take a look at those, you know, we take your suggestions. So yeah. Doop, doop. And right there. And hmm. I'm trying to take a look. Because I will. Doop. Right there. And then after this, after I've painted it, say I'm like done with it, I'm happy with it. I make a glow dodge layer or an add glow layer and then I do the fire sparkle 
or it's not sparkle glow i should say just like that right there so this is another way of doing it and then i erase the tips a little bit because i don't want it to radiate like that and after adding that i see you just like that and those are the two ways i like to do fire you know just wanted to share them with you and the, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way it's just more what works for you you know what works for what you you're trying to do because if you rely on layers like this one it's uh let me write down the pros and cons layers you know it's fast and easy but less control but then painted it's uh a bit slow but more control there you go beep, beep, beep. <laughs> don't need layers oh yeah you don't really need layers for anything for sure it's just up to you you know i want to show all the options before we continue and last but not least actually uh let's see for properties at least beep. um what was I gonna say? Right, embers. There we go. So sometimes you might notice that there are embers like flying around. So let's see. So maybe sometimes you would see like little little lights like dancing around the fire. So that actually comes from the thing that's burning. So for example, if you were burning a piece of firewood, right, it's turning to ash. And all that ash is being blown into the air while it's still on fire, and that's what makes the ember effect. So, if the something that's burning, you know, is slowly turning into dust, then it would have embers, like this one. But if it was, say, a flamethrower, you know, it's coming from, like, gas, it wouldn't have embers, like this one. So it's a minor touch that really tells a lot about what kind of fire it is. So, yeah. Beep. And... Let me think of what I've missed. I guess this is good so far. Boop. Yeah, because I'm... These are all from my personal observations. That's how I like to do it. I like to observe from reference and then try to get my own uh, conclusion. But then if I want to learn more, that's when I start reading on. Boop. And so, where was I? The source. There. And make it a through layer. I need to sort my layers. Boop. And the source. Source. Because the source is where the fire is coming from, basically. That's what I mean. And... I sort of mentioned it earlier, right? It affects how the fire appears, I guess. So for example, if you if you want to do a more like direct flame, like this one, this sort of shape. So it's kind of like a laser beam, right? I'll just draw the shape. So this one, it looks like it comes from a like what's it called? A lighter? Lighter slash blowtorch so if you want to look for reference right and you you're having trouble right trying to figure out what kind of reference to do try to associate you know so if you wanted like a burning fire like really direct you know not really erratic like this one try to look up references like a blowtorch, blowtorch fire, or a lighter. Because I know looking for reference is always a difficulty for students. Or not just for students, even for me. For everybody, really. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bluish gradient fire, for sure. Yeah. I'll do that later. This bluish gradient is so fun. 
and then if you want to do like an erratic fire so i'll do that glow dawn maybe take inspiration from something more natural like a uh, like a campfire or a barbecue fire like that so there you go blue flame so let me draw this actually i i wanted to draw blue flame and then harden the edge, like that. There, and add the the little fire right there. There, and I'm gonna clean up the edges with my hard eraser. Oh, that was a nice shape actually, so I'll do that, I'll keep that. And then I'll soften the edges a little bit here. Just like that. Nice blue fire. How are you making a fire? Oh, it's a it's a blend mode type. It's called Glow Dodge right here. So if you look at my layers, right? This is only one layer, and I'm using a Glow Dodge layer. And I'm using this really saturated blue right here. So right there. And let me see the the chat actually. I don't know how to draw smoke. And whenever someone tells me, I don't quite understand. Okay. Well, I wasn't actually planning to talk about smoke, but I guess I can talk about it for sure. So, right there. So, smoke only really appears, for example, this is connected to what I'm talking about, right? So, know the source of the fire right here. So, let me do that. So, smoke, the way, um, how do I start? Hmm. Smoke only really comes from something that's burning, I guess. So, say you have a piece of wood that you're burning. Like I mentioned earlier, it will have embers, right? So, it'll have the blue embers, because those are actually the ashes of the wood that's burning up. And then the smoke also comes from the, uh, the wood right here. So, just to simply talk about it, you know, it'll be black, it'll be like a charred black, but I won't use like a full black, maybe like a slightly blue smoke like this one. Deep. So just like fire, it always goes up like that. And just like fire, it tends to get thinner near the top, right? So it'll be thickest at the bottom because it's coming from the source right so the source of the smoke is the uh what's it called the wood i guess Something like that i mean the smoke wouldn't be this strong to be honest but i do just want to showcase how i do smoke and there i'm gonna erase the edges a little bit so it's all about the gradient really like that. So that's a simple smoke. It's not really the focus, but I hope that helps. <laughs> Do a lesson on clouds? We did, actually. Uh, Jesse did one a few weeks ago. Yeah, take notes. And you can see, I'm more of an observer. So you can do your homework and read up as to why things are the way they are. But for me, I just like to observe and do like the in-between, you know? And let's see, I guess before we continue, I think I've talked about pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about, but I do want to do a sort of step-by-step -step since somebody asked, right? Somebody asked what kind of uh, workflow I do for fire. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to write down the steps. Steps right here. So steps for version one and then steps. For version 2. I have two versions. So number one, make glow dodge layer. Layer. Or any sort. Maybe add glow would work too. Let me try. Add glow layer. Beep. Let me try add glow if it would work as good. 
So maybe this time I'll do a green fire. Yeah, add glow definitely works for sure. So I'm gonna... And then I'm just gonna draw the shape of the fire. I'm too lazy to write the steps, but I guess you guys can do... Uh... I'll just try to explain it as I go. The lore of clouds. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't catch the stream, but I did catch the drawing. Maybe I should draw fire with eyes. Or maybe fire with lips. I don't know. <laughs> Something weird. The cloud stream. So, something like that. Lore for fire? Well, hmm. Maybe, maybe my fire, you know, fire is misunderstood. Because, you know, people associate fire with warmth, right? You know, warmth associated with, like, friendliness. But fire, fire has too much too much warmth he's actually super friendly but then so friendly to the point that he's burning everybody around him and this makes him sad sad boy fire so that's my lore for this green fire but please i don't recommend hugging fire unless you have a hazmat suit of some sort okay Hold up, let me draw somebody in a hazmat suit. There you go. And now, fire is happy. The end. There's my lore. Now he has a friend. Mm, where is it? Where's my drawing? There, I know. <laughs> this is kind of cur- Oh wait, you know what? I forgot that Among Us actually has hands. So maybe... So maybe it's just like the... Like there. He's like holding him up. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I... I wanted to draw somebody in a hazmat suit, but... <laughs> this is the first thing I thought of. So this works. Now fire is happy. What was I talking about? <laughs> Two tutorials in one? Yes. Okay, so for world building. You know, all the world building in the world can't save you if it doesn't have good characters. That's my other lesson, okay? You could have world building where you have history on like the city, but then that city would mean nothing unless you have a character who loves that city, you know? So lore. Lore is important, but also a character to experience the lore is also very important. Just as important, arguably. So yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I guess I should be talking about the steps. Uh, let's see. Deep, deep. And let me draw up the lore. So this is the, the quickest and simplest uh, way, right? Like I mentioned earlier. If you rely on layers. But then the, the problems you'll encounter, right, is say you start drawing a background, it'll start to change. So like, say like if I, so you see that I'm like coloring in the background, it'll be different. So you'll have to put some sort of backdrop to it. So let's see. So maybe you're going to have to put a green again behind it just to to make it just as bright again like that so to sort of explain right now my layers the layer on the very top is add glow and at the very bottom is the background color right here but then you can see that it's not as vibrant right because layer modes what they do is they affect the layer below it and so, right there, I put a little fire, right? So this is what it looks like underneath, right there. And so now this add glow is affecting the color underneath it. And this is another way to work with it because this one takes a lot of layers for sure. Um, it's kind of hard because say, 
you make a change on the add glow layer, right? Say like, oh, I want to shave this fire. You're going to have to shave this shape at the bottom as well. So it's a lot of work. Um, so, but it's up to you if you, you think it's worth it, you know? So yes, we got happy green fire. <laughs> and then let me see. Oh, yeah, what I'm using right now is default brushes. I'm not really using a special one. So yeah. Uh, learning modes. Yes, for sure. Thanks for reminding me, Joe. Yeah, some of them do have different names, for sure. And let's see. But yeah, there you go. And my other version, what time is it? The other version, that's pretty much just like this. So you draw the, uh, I guess I won't go over it again since it's redundant, but you know, you paint in the color first and then you do the add glow afterwards just to complement it. So yeah. And I think that's all I wanted to talk about. I know my notes are very messy. <laughs> it's nothing like Jesse's at all, but I'm more of a doer, you know? <laughs> so I guess just ask questions if you guys have any, you know? You know, honestly, it's the same for class. Like, I'm not really the type in my classes to do like really nice notes like Jesse does. But I am the type to uh, just do, you know? I, I like to talk to students and be like, hey, what do you want to see? And then I show them. <laughs> I'm more of a doer. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I do, but I don't know. I just like to talk like this. <laughs> oh, you must go. All right. See you around. I hope you watch the VOD. We'll draw the, the, the fire mage now, so we're going to miss it. But you can skip ahead. <laughs> but um, what was I going to talk about? The fire. All right, speaking of classes, actually. So next week, we're going to be starting summer camp. So it's going to be classes pretty much every day. You know, we got like two. What's it called? two classes per day and then it'll be like five days a week so yeah be sure to check those out because some of our streamers right like jesse me and vanessa they'll be doing uh camps so if you want to do classes with them be sure to check it out on the stream Ooh, what about drawing fire that's being shot out like a fireball Ooh, that's a really good that's a really good suggestion actually i will talk about that right here so I will do the quick one again so like I said fire very erratic you know it goes up it also gets affected a lot by wind right so say the fire is being launched this way so it's being if it's being launched this way the wind will be going the opposite way so I'm gonna draw it right now so keeping in mind the tips that we learned earlier, you know, fire is still trying to go up, but it is being blown like that. Or maybe say this fire is being hurled at like a, a really strong rate where it doesn't even have the chance to, to go up. So maybe I will do that. So the intensity of how hard it's thrown also affects the fire, I guess, so right there, like wind right there and so the tip like i said will be faded nice and blended right here and then i'm gonna do that so i guess i would do something like this you know like a sort of shape where if i had to draw it in pencil it'd be like that so there's like a clear action that's happening because I also like to think of fire as a graphic design symbol, I guess, because in reality, you know, fire is very formless and very, very random, but I like to give it that direction, you know, give it the vibe right there that it's like being launched at a crazy rate. <laughs> Ooh, drawing explosions. Ooh, that's another good one. So let's see. Let me erase that. 
So again, it's all about the source and the direction. So if I was going to draw an explosion, right? Maybe it's going upwards. So maybe I'll do a, a blue explode or a purple one this time around. So an explosion is pretty much like, like boom. Oh, that's the wrong, like boom. You know, like it's going upwards like that. But, hmm. Actually, that's a, there's so many different ways you could do explosions. This isn't the only way. Cause you could just do like a basic explosion like this, right? Like the cloud-like ones. There, let's see. What's my favorite flame color? My favorite flame color would be purple, probably, like right now. Meteor plunger. Let's see. What brush is that? I'm just using an airbrush. Uh, I'm not usually using like a special one, but if you're talking about this one, it's like a comic effect. Like it's a comic effect uh, sort of brush, but I don't use this often, really. It's just in Clip Studio, but... Yeah. And then I guess for explosions, the way I could describe it, right? It's kind of like smoke. So think of it as like a cloud. And of course the explosion is happening on the inside, right? Right there, but then it's being shrouded by the cloud. And so the way I like to think about it, if an explosion is like that, like cloud-like, it will sort of seep through, and then the corners would be the brightest, actually. So, like, I'll show an example. Think of, like, a cloud, and, like, the inside is bright. Yeah, I'm only doing this really quickly because it's not really part of our uh, lesson here. I just want to humor you guys right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, telling you, I'm just uh, humoring chat right now, but I think I'm done. That's that's just quick tips. Now I'm supposed to draw the, uh, what's it called? The mage casting fire. So yeah. And I think I'm not going to take too long on the designing the mage. So I won't talk about it. And yeah, you're welcome because on stream, I know it seems really all over the place when I stream, but... I really love humoring chat because it's a unique experience, you know, of streaming. Because in videos, you know, you can only really comment and then they see the comment afterwards, right? And so... And so you kind of miss out. But for streaming, you know, you have me live and I see your submissions live. And so yeah, that's why I wanted to... Uh, humor everybody and right now i have a i'm gonna share my concept to you guys so i kind of want to do this mage who's doing like the what's it called the performer's bow i guess i don't know what it's called but like they're showing off like this one and right now i'm blocking out the the silhouettes right here So this is another way I like to draw my characters. I just like to draw the silhouettes like that. And it's one of those things where it doesn't make sense right now, but I'll show you. I'll show you guys. It'll be really cool. It'll be really nice. Yeah, actually for the poll, it was really close. Uh, creature almost won. It was like a 2% difference. There. You guys really wanted to see. <laughs> you guys really wanted to see the creature. Ah, uh, thank you. I'm flattered. A curtain call? Could be. Word. Yeah, drawing characters like this is so nice because you don't really have to worry too much about sketching yet. But, you know, it has its own appeal. I, I really want to focus on the pose for this one. Right there, and then we got the staff. 
and I'd say this is pretty advanced actually, this way of uh, this way of doing gestures. I wouldn't recommend it to people who are starting to learn anatomy. It's because I already know my anatomy enough, at least I know my anatomy enough to uh, do this stuff. So uh, yeah, just be sure to know that. It's gonna be tough because right now, right, it's very formless and you don't know what directions the face is going and stuff like that. But I know, I have it in my head, you know. So, beep. And I'm gonna start sketching so that you guys can see what I see in my head. <laughs> Where I try my best to make it nice and relaxing. Because that is the vibes I want to go for in my in my stream. So right there. So I want my mage to be mysterious right here. Got like a big collar. And then the face. Kind of shrouded. And then there. And then we got the chest. Beep. Maybe I'll exaggerate the bend a little bit more. And the belly. I heard that original character should be recognizable by its silhouettes. Is this true? Yeah, it's definitely for sure helpful. Because a lot of visual clutter can be distracting. Because look, if I did this, you guys would immediately know who I'm drawing. At least I hope you do. So if I did this, right? Already, you know who this is. I hope. Or if I did, you know, this. If I did this, you guys would know, right? <laughs> it's Sonic. The control. It's all good. You don't need to apologize for missing stream, you know? There is a VOD, so worry not. Megumin, <laughs> yeah, explosion. Oh yeah, I can definitely see that. I mean, she definitely has the showmanship that Megumin has. But no, this is an original character, and I'm just making this up as I go. Really, I don't. <laughs> this is not like a predetermined OC. I just, I'm just doing shapes that I think would look cool. Maybe she has like... Yeah, since creature almost won, maybe I'll do some like... Beastly traits. Like the shoes. It's kind of like from... Star vs. the Forces of Evil, like her shoes. Like she has this one pair of shoes that has like a... I'm trying to remember what it looked like. It looked like this, I think. Which I really like. It's like high... High boots. So that's sort of my inspiration. <laughs> yeah. Please, I need to learn how to draw fire. This is an instant. <laughs> what? I need to learn how to draw fire. Oh yeah, don't worry. I will get to the fire in a little bit here, but I do want to draw the character first. So I'll show you guys a trick on how to make the fire... How to draw the fire, I guess. Because even though it's very formless, you know, I will show you my little method. There. There. Then, of course, the classic, classic baggy, baggy sleeves, like that. And let's see. Maybe I'll change. I'll just merge it into one layer now. Okay, let me erase that. And make a layer under it. For the leg. Or maybe not that much. Maybe this much. The 
just like that and then i merge it back and this is the other leg just like that and maybe i'll erase this to show the foot gap and just done that and i don't think i'll be doing line art actually yeah mega man style word because Mega Man, Mega Man's silhouette is so cool. Like he got like the big head, small body, and then the big hands, and then big boots. <laughs> this is a really bad Mega Man, but yeah, have you guys ever seen the Mega Man Two, like cover art? That one's a classic. It's like a really old. <laughs> It's like the American version, and it's like a it's a guy doing this. It's like a super realistic guy wearing Mega Man's outfit, and he's like holding a gun like that. <laughs> it looks like this on the cover. Classic, classic guy, Mega Man. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I should talk about that, like why I designed some things in certain ways. Because fire, right, like we talked about earlier, it's very... I see it as a very lively shape, and so I wanted to put that energy into the fire as well. Kind of looks like leaves for sure, but I can change that by adding like that. Maybe just like a little... Little thingy like that. And then the staff design that oh i have an idea actually i have a really cool idea i just had so maybe like that so that's the fire like that perfect and then this is a crystal like that like that and i'll color it in it's raining outside, perfect for the fire stream. Oh, Mega Man? He's a classic guy. Classic video game guy. He's been around for a while. And then I should design the, the hat. And... Add a little bit more detail onto the dress actually so let me fix that because i don't want to dwell too long on the character design this is not a character design stream after all this is a fire learn how to render fire stream and just did a time check we have <laughs> this warming up oh yeah we're just getting started we're just getting warmed up here as well this isn't the in the final picture. Right there. Dip, dip. And okay, her waist piece is kinda lacking, so maybe try to add something there. <laughs> she looks like she's wearing a a wrestling belt, but I kinda like that, so I'll keep it. Like that. And then finally I will start sketching what kind of layout I will give for the fire. So like I said earlier, I like to think of fire as a sort of graphic design element. You know, I like to think of it as a shape. And so what I was thinking, what I had in my head, was that to complement her showmanship personality you know like she's a showy type of character maybe i'll do like something like this you know like she's casting a fire around her so i drew like a little circle around her just like that just like that and then hmm what other flame spells that you guys want to see let me know let me know guys 
because right now I just thought of this one. Hmm. Oh, Superman, Ultraman, Batman, <laughs> all the man. You never saw Mega Man? Well, I guess he hasn't had a game in a while, to be honest. Like, his last game was, what, Mega Man 11? Which is like a few years ago? Two, three years ago? I don't know how long it's been. Firebirds. Ooh. I feel like that'd be too hard. Maybe something more... Like, hmm. Maybe Fire Wings, I wouldn't mind. Like that. Fire Wings like this one. Maybe just the one. Ooh. Fire Surrounded Hoop, like in the circus. Fire Breath. A Ribbon of Fire. Fireflies? You would not believe your eyes. You would not believe your eyes. Or you know what? To add to the creature, I guess, creature design, I'm gonna add a tail. <laughs> Calcifer. Yeah, Calcifer, pretty cute. Uh, yeah, I feel like this should be good. So you got like a... <laughs> it kind of looks like she's standing in a stove actually, like a fire stove. Which I really like. I don't know about the fire wings, but maybe I'll add like horns on her. Maybe I'll add horns on her hat. Then. Or maybe no unicorn horn. Just normal horns. Like that. Beep. Yeah, she's a little empty. How would you approach drawing a humanoid made of fire? Yeah, that's always a tough question, but I think for me, I would do the second method right here where I would paint I would paint it first and then just add the, the glow effects. So I think I should start coloring now, actually. If I uh, want to get to that point. Because I will try to give you a tip, so... Put a sticky note on that. I'll get to you in a second when I get to coloring. Word. Yeah, Atlantis. I've never watched the movie. I think I was too young to remember. Because I did watch it back in the day, but... Right now, I don't remember too much. TBH. And right now, I'm making the sketch darker. Just so we could have the, the fire pop out, you know. We could have it really stand out in the dark. Because if everything's right, you know, it doesn't stand out as much. And let's see. Then in the human torch. Yeah. But I will try to show in a little bit. So I think I'm going to do like a painterly style. I'm not going to do line art. I'm going to lay out all the colors that I want. So maybe she's wearing like a a charred purple right here. Deep. And then we got the hat. I guess this is also a nice opportunity to see, you know, how I like to draw. Which is in a painterly style. And then I make another layer underneath. And maybe I'll make it slightly darker just so I can distinguish it. And then that, that, that. Her outfit. I'm gonna have on a separate layer. Bloop. Bloop. Yeah, and what I really like about the painterly style is that 
You don't have to worry too much about the line art. It's just the colors, you know. What about making the end of her staff be on fire or glow? Yeah, those are really good tips, actually. Maybe I might take that, for sure. And then last but not least, we got the legs. And then maybe I'll make the other legs on a separate layer. Doop. Doop. And then right there. And right there. Cool. And then her... We got her tail. Maybe I'll make it a little bit brighter. Brighter red, maybe. And you can see, I really like to draw S's because it's nice and organic. Nice and fun shape to draw. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I missed it. What is your childhood movie? I'm trying to back read. Because I think for me, if I had to say a childhood movie that I watched a lot was Treasure Planet by Disney. You guys ever watched it? Oh, Land Before Time. Yeah, for sure. Classic. Yeah, you guys should watch it. It's really good. It's uh, steampunk, futuristic, and it's basically Treasure Island but in space. Mysterious, the smile, golden smile. Beep, beep. Let me draw the smile in. The Lord of the Rings trilogy. I've only ever watched it once, and it was in a row back in the day. I really need it. I really need to watch it again. No. Got the sharp teeth. Just like that. Didn't watch movies as a kid? Well, now you could watch movies as you are right now. And then. Where's my sketch? Right there. there. I'm trying to remember where the hand was. So maybe I'll make the hand the same color. Doop, doop, doop. There. And then what is this? The smile. The smile layer. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm trying my best to like appeal to everybody, but sadly, uh, I can't draw everything. I mean, I would if I could, honestly. The weird word I've heard about that. The weird Bulgarian treasure planet uh, movie. Uh, it's so weird. I've heard about that. I've seen the clips, but I've I did not want to watch any more after that. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> okay you got me i okay i will just for you well actually it's for me i will do it Beep. there we go these are not horns anymore they are ears and i think i have enough from the sketch oh wait no i forgot to uh do the the staff. I will do that in a little bit. And soft. Oh wait, no. Ah, there we go. There. Doop. Doop. 
And then what color? This, this. <laughs> yes! Whoa, fire cat! Cat mage! Now let's see. <laughs> I need to see what else chat is saying. Ooh, your birthday is in nine months? Well, let me be the first to say happy birthday. Hehe. <laughs> I was first and let's see I wonder what color the staff should be maybe I'll make it like a nice gold to contrast everything else or maybe like a wooden like a sort of wooden shape I don't think that would be good for a staff to have a wooden staff be for fire magic but i think it adds charm and character if it is wood okay. there so whenever i'm doing this sort of painterly style i like to i like to color in all the elements so that i have enough context for my drawing so that i could just go off of the shapes you know then right there so we got it's pretty much everything i wanted to do and now for the fire let's see yes there is a discord server that's where we got the submissions from earlier actually because we do a theme every month and this month's theme is march of the robots so yeah and let's see Maybe I'll do like, maybe I'll do a more pinkish flame. Just because I think it's nice. Yeah, it's nice and it still applies what we taught from earlier. Actually. Yeah, right now I don't want it to be perfectly circled. That's why I'm not using a, like a circle layer, I guess. And let me turn down stabilization right here. Oh yeah, try not to share try not to share your your birthday. Just say like, oh yeah, my birthday is then, but no need to share the year. <laughs> yeah, just as a heads up. That's my bad as well. <laughs> I should have been more clear. And right now, I'm gonna add the nice shapes of the fire. Beep. Oh, I left a hole somewhere. Yeah, and to go back to the person who asked about how to draw a person of fire, uh, made of fire, I mean, I would do it like this. I would draw the base color first like this one and let's see and i wouldn't make them transparent um unless i want to that would take a lot more work but it's definitely doable if you want to make them transparent because if you want them to be see-through this person made a fire it's gonna take a lot of work either if you do this method you're gonna have to like manually draw what's behind it so for example there's like a person behind this fire for example then you're gonna have to draw in the shadow like this one just a little bit you know um it's one of those things where i can't really answer it for you it's more just try the methods because both of them have their perks both of them have their their pros their cons so uh yeah just to keep trying. Keep trying methods. That is my main tip. And I will try my best to show said methods in the stream. Alright. No need to apologize as usual. So, see ya. Lots of fire study, yeah. Or even then, you know, maybe you could do the classic just 
look up fire reference, right? But you could also be creative with your reference. Like, as an example, a certain game company that makes a zombie game, right? You wouldn't want to look at, you know, gross reference, you know, reference that'll make you want to, like, hurl. <laughs> so what they did instead was they looked up reference of rotting fruit, and that's what they used as reference for the skin, you know? So you could be creative with how you use reference. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly, oh, I only look up fire reference, right? Yeah. Inspiration can come from, from anywhere. Yeah, for sure. And let's see, what time is it? Okay. Got about 40 minutes left. So I will... There we go. Let's see. Hmm. Try to see if there's anything worth... Uh, well, maybe not. And there, I'm going to draw in the... This is the sleeve. Yeah, so this is what I like about Painterly. Doop. Or maybe... I don't have to worry about the line art. Just all about color. But I know that's not for everyone. Doop, doop. Doop. What time is it? For smoke references, you could look at ink dropped in water. Yeah, that's another way, right? That's a really creative way of doing smoke reference. So maybe I'll draw in the... Thumb here in shadow. Or maybe I'll use... Where is it? This one. Use my oil pastel brush. Maybe not that much. Make it more saturated. For the fingies, right here. <laughs> My birthday is on June. It's on the month of June. Favorite form of fire? Good question. Mm. Maybe a swirling fire, sorta. I will try to do that later on, actually. So like there. There, there. Give us fire. <laughs> yes, I will. All right. Yeah, I would love to do a fire tornado, but I know we only have so much time. So right here, I'm gonna add the shadows onto the outfit. All the folds. There. Deep, deep. And so with the with this sort of art style, you kind of rely on just describing the shapes right here, because you don't have the line art to tell you uh, what to do. So now, just gonna quickly go over everything actually. So you got the wrestling belt right here. And right now, I'm making the shadows in front because the fire is pretty much like behind. So like that. And I think I'll just clean up later actually. Doot, doot. <laughs> Little fire cats. Simple fire cat. 
Maybe. Maybe in a little bit. <laughs> Maybe as like a finishing touch, I will draw like the fire cat. For sure. That sounds like a cool idea. Deep. So I'm going to add the... Thingy here. Yeah, because I do want to show as well how... How the lighting would affect our character here. Beep, beep. There. Yeah, Jesse, I'm subbing in for Jesse right now. She's taking a nice deserved break. But don't worry, she'll be back next week. But on Sundays. Uh, next, this Sunday actually, I will be streaming again. So I hope you guys make it for that one. Hope to see some familiar faces on there. Familiar names, I should say. There. There. <laughs> I forgot about the stream. I mean, you're on the stream right now. That's all that matters. I'm gonna lock transparency. There. Yeah, because most of the fire will be coming from the back. Right here. So like that. And then I'm gonna add a shadow over here. Just like that. And so, I guess to talk about what I'm doing right now. I'm starting off with the lightest color, and then I'm slowly going to the darkest. So you can sort of see it right here. Deep. And I'm gonna... I usually save the brightest and the darkest colors for last, you know, because they stand out a lot. And you won't want to overuse them. Just a general tip I like to give even all my students in class. And oh yeah, hey guy. Oh, it's Jesse. Yo, Jesse's in chat. Yo. <laughs> Jesse's in chat. Say hi to Jesse. <laughs> Hope you're having a nice break. Having a good time. And then there. And then let's see. I'm trying to see the shading that I should do here. Oh, I should fix the thingy a little bit. There. And then add the darkest. darkest shadow on here oh you just got here welcome then yeah thank you <laughs> we try our best we try our best in every video tutorial <laughs> of course yeah it's it's fun it's always fun to stream because you get to have the interaction and you get to hear what, you know, what the people want in real time. And there. Alright, the boots. I haven't even done anything for the boots. Let's see. Deep. What time is it? <laughs> it's weird. It was a sign. And I think I'm gonna make it golden boots. Or maybe I'll save the gold, actually. For like the... I don't know what else to call them, but elephant. I guess elephant boots. Because it's sort of reminiscent of the... Elephant thingy here. Doop, doop, doop. And let's see. And 
there. Maybe I'll make it like a nice gold. I'll add like gold trimming to everything in a little bit. Doop. You can never go wrong with gold trim in your design. Doop. And then I'll make this like real dark. Dark here. And then I gotta, gotta catch up on chats. <laughs> yeah, I am using Clip Studio Paint for sure. Yeah, I wanted my character to be mischievous. That's why I just shrouded him in mystery. <laughs> Not an animator or an artist. Well, welcome, still. <laughs> I have no idea what you're looking at. You're drawing a mage. I'm drawing a mage cat. So, yeah. Word. We're just here to chill. Hopefully, come and stay to chill as well. Just talk and chat. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna add some dark colors onto here. Doop. Maybe darker. Yeah, I'll be adding all the darkest colors, and then afterwards I'll be adding all the bright light onto our drawing here. Doop. And then... Right here. And adding a shadow onto the little toenails, I guess. Doop. Doop, doop. Doop, doop. Just to give it some more definition. And I realize I merged it. Or no, I haven't merged it yet. Okay, this is fine. And then the dragon tail, I will add a shadow right here an achy podcast well actually this is kind of a spoiler guys this is kind of a spoiler but we were thinking of a jesse iggy collab and it's gonna be fun and with collabs with other streamers so we're gonna be trying to do more stuff together and hopefully that's something you guys would want to see because it's always fun like the the oc stream with josh was so fun because not only did we get submissions from you guys, we got to draw together and you got to see like two different perspectives. That's great. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, but still thinking about it. And let's see. Thinking about how to go about it, but yeah. And yeah, right now I'm trying to fill in all the shadows. So that's uh have a nice <laughs> nice to see the excitement by the way. Phil kinda looks like he's hiding a snake behind him though. <laughs> I mean I could sorta of see it, but I still see a tail, I think. For me at least. But I'll try to think of ways to get around that. If that's what you see. Oh, all right. Thanks for thanks for chilling. Yeah, be sure to check out you know the final results after the stream. So yeah, I'll be posted on the community tab. And I was thinking for the uh, for the staff actually. I was thinking of it being like charred wood. So maybe it's like dark and charred. Like this, except for the tip. And then I'll, I'll draw like nice pink. Kind of like the cracks, maybe. Like that. I'm adding like the little... And here's a tip actually for everybody. I see this common, well, habit, I guess. Habit is a word for it. Uh, some people, when they do a detail, they zoom in like all the way, like right here, and then they do the details. Try to avoid doing that because 
this little detail, so I'm gonna try doing that, right? Say I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna draw like right here, right here. It's gonna be like this really fancy detail, right? And then there's gonna be like a gem here. But then when you zoom out, like you could barely see it. <laughs> so try to remember to zoom out. Like maybe like this, you know? So be sure to check that out. Yeah, so we're just uh, thinking about it. And I just wanted to see, of course, like if that's something you guys would wanna um see i guess in a stream want to see the reactions i guess or if you guys are like um oh, it's okay lukewarm reaction if it was on sundays um i'm trying to remember okay i should back to have more context <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'll try to consider what works for everybody for streams. Dip. Hmm. I'm trying to look at my old drawing again. To see what else I could add. I guess I could fix the ears a little bit. Check the time. Because I do want to focus a certain amount of time on the uh, thing as well. Maybe I'll make it red actually, the little veins. I think red looks a lot better actually, or gold. Yeah, I like gold better. And then another few. Then, I'm gonna try to make this nice and wooden, charred wood. Deep, deep. And the wooden texture, just like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, having a... I should, <laughs> I should catch up before I say that. Yeah, because the art style, art style comes after, like, you learn. So the best way I could describe art style is you learn something, right? Say you learn anatomy, and everybody has their own certain way of doing things, right? So your style will always shine through anyway, as you learn. It will change as you learn new things. So that's why I always recommend people to learn first before looking for their art style. Because looking for your art style is something you just naturally get. It's not really something necessarily that you have to look for, right? Unless uh, you feel like, you know, you've learned a lot and you want to try something new, then by all means, you know, feel free to do so, but... I don't think it should be your top of the list priority, you know? Because for me, I went through a lot of art styles, to be honest, as I learned. And I did do that route, where I tried to look for my art style and tried to cement it. But what ended up happening was the more I learned, I'm like, oh, okay, like, I should do this differently, you know? Because I just learned that the arm looks like this, or I've been drawing legs wrong with my art style. So it kind of changes shape anyway, as it goes. So I try to recommend, to put simply, just learn. Learn your fundamentals, and then you, uh, and then you, uh, look for your art style. So yeah. And I'm gonna put a shadow. Consistent, but your digital art is inconsistent. That just means you don't have habits yet, to be honest. I mean, I have that problem too, right? It's only with time, you know? Everything just takes time, <laughs> no matter what. So, yeah. And our concept is coming along really nicely, actually. And it's time. It's time to merge everything into one layer. Just so it's easier for me to work with. 
Now everything's in one layer. And I'm going to try to refine our details here. Because I think layers are such a pain to work with. Like, there's so many of them. And so now I just merge them into one. And I change the shape a little bit. Okay. <laughs> watch you on rewatch. When is the fire coming? Good question. It will come soon. It's just that this part is important as well, you know? So this is what I like to tell my students as well. For some people, they like to make the light brighter. To, you know, make the light brighter, which makes sense, right, on paper. But what you could do, instead of going exclusively brighter, you could make everything darker in comparison, which makes it bright. And I'll show you what I mean. So it'll pay off in a little bit here. So you see that I'm spending a lot of time, like, shading right making the shadows darker and then when i add the light it's gonna pay off you know it takes time it's all gonna pay off and i'm gonna add the shadows ta-ta yeah word it's always nice to look back to your old art Right? Because you'd be like, wow, how far I've come. And you get to learn, you know, it's always nice to look back and be like, yeah, I've learned a lot. And you get to appreciate, you know, what you've learned so far. It's very nice. Right, and I forgot to add this. Some gold trim. Maybe not that dark. And the fire. <laughs> Sometimes you're... Oh yeah. I mean, it doesn't even have to be super old. Like for me, I still have artworks from like a few months ago that I'm like, oof, what have I done? <laughs> so it just happens. And right here, I'm going to start adding like the pink, the pink lighting onto the gold trims right here, like being reflected. There, so add a little bit of pink, touch of pink. And then now... Doop, doop, doop. Darker shadow. Darker shadow on the tail. And now, finally, I'm gonna do the... I'm gonna do the, uh, the fire. So, my fire is kind of violent. It's really, uh, lively. So, I'm gonna do glow dodge. Or not, I'm gonna... Just a normal one. This made you so good. Thank you. Yeah, it was a... I didn't really want to focus too hard on the mage. And so... Hmm, trying to think of how to go about the fire. Hmm, maybe for this one. Let's see how that looks. Maybe I'll just do the old way this one or maybe not i'll just do i'll draw in the fire first with our smooth and like we said earlier right the tips are slightly faded like that so i'm using this brush that sort of drags it along like that that so this is all in preparation for when i finally finally colored in that yeah thank you for joining 
Bye bye. <laughs> yes, this is a fire tutorial after all. You're right. Beep. But you know, fire isn't the only thing because, yeah, the fire is easy peasy. Like I'll do it right now. But everything else surrounding the fire is just as important. You know, like the shadows and how it affects everything around it. Because, yeah, it's a, uh, it's an element of a drawing. It's usually not the main focus, right? So, now I'm just gonna... Let's see. Yeah. Now I'm gonna do glow dodge. Just gonna edit it off like that. I wonder if I should. Yeah, I'll do like this actually. Let me redo that. Like I said, the bottom of the fire is usually the brightest, and so I'll do that. I'll brighten up the bottom with a glow dodge layer. Like that. And like that. And so now. I got that, then I'll merge it together so that I have that effect. And then I'm gonna tone down the fire a little bit, give it some shape on the inside right there. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Let me check chat. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, because this fire at the bottom, it's more like a a raging fire, and I will add more calm fire afterwards. Just like that. And there, I'm gonna add this right here. Yeah, since it's just one layer, I'm trying to fill in the gaps here. Doop. And merge it. Doop, doop, doop. Best thing about art is that there are so many ways to accomplish the same thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, so this is one way where you just paint it in, right? This is the one of the methods that I showed earlier. And then later on, I'm going to do the just layer mode way. Or relying on the layer mode a lot. So, so for this one, you can see that it's just one layer that I'm painting on. Right here. Alright, see you around. Just join. Welcome. And yeah, came just in time. I'm just uh, drawing the fire all around. And then afterwards, I'm going to draw like a calmer flame. Like a sort of wing, wing flame on the character right here. And I think it's a little bit too tall on this one. So I'm going to bathe the fire a little bit. And I do a big old stretch. Ooh. Oh gosh. I've been drawing for a while. And then. Posture check. Oh yeah. Taking care of yourself, just as important. there and like i mentioned you know it has a nice shape to it you know i should check in again at the overall picture i really like it and now i'm gonna add the glow dodge on the, the character being affected by the the glow of the fire and i'm gonna add the fire more at the back, 
or like the places where the fire is closest right there or maybe not not on here maybe more like the underside just chilling and here and let's see <laughs> And now this is always the fun part. I like to add the light afterwards with the glow dodge layer. Because now you could really see the the uh fire affecting our character. Right? And then maybe I'll make stuff darker with a multiply layer right here. So maybe not that dark, but just slightly darker in the front. Deep deep. And I will clean it up a little bit after. So maybe I'm going to tone down the... Multiply. Tone down. Yeah, here's the difference, right? Between the light and no light. So you can really see how much it adds to our overall picture. Oh, thank you. I mean, to be honest, I would have been better if I took more time. But this is like a, a quick version, you know, like... I want to show my process because usually I would just uh, this would take hours usually like sketching and thinking of a pose but right now these are just <laughs> the stuff that comes to the top of my head so of course when it comes to yours right try to spend more time than I did because this is all just really quick and try to you could be more creative than I was in this one I think so, yeah. So it looks nice. Thank you. <laughs> or I got that too. Yeah, for real. Like, it's not about the age, really. It's about how you learn. I think growing up, that's what I learned because there are so many artists who are better than me at my age. But that's not really what's important. What's important is they learn, you know, like you could do it too. If you, if they could do it, that means, uh, maybe you could try a way that works for you. You know, maybe they just found a way that works for them at really early stage. Right. So yeah, maybe I'll try to turn it up right there. Started with glitter glue. Yes. So nice. And then maybe I'll add a pink crystal actually. Pink crystal. And I just realized class is almost over. No. I don't want it to end so soon. But yeah, it's almost over. With just a few more minutes. But I'm gonna add. I think I'm just gonna draw the fire again, the fire wings. One last, one last thing, and I think I'll wrap up. There, and I'll add a little bit of a shadow on the crystal. Just to make it look shiny. Right there. And what else? Okay, I want to do like a more calm fire, I guess. Like maybe 12 minutes, but you could go slightly over. Yeah, so true. Actually, what time is it? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I think I have lots of time, actually. Let's see. Starting principles after school every day. Stay up for art studies and a huge, a huge group. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Because confidence is part of it too, right? If uh, if you're not feeling too hot, you're not going to learn a lot. <laughs> so if you found your pace, right? Just use that pace. It'll be nice. I'm going to add some like little embers on here 
has a nice effect on the on the staff. And let's see. I will merge you. And then as promised, I will show the other method, which is just the glow dodge. So I make a glow dodge layer. And then maybe a more pink. Pinkish. Pinkish flame like that. So again, the brightest is always the middle. So maybe not, not this color. I'll try again. Yeah, maybe brighter, because I want it to be hot, like a hot white. Boop. And then the color. So I've, I'll use two colors for this one. And <laughs> maybe it'll be like the Among Us one from earlier. We'll make a. A nice cat-shaped fire. Oh, let's see. Spirit Fair. Yeah, I've never played Spirit Fair. Yeah, I guess for me, a game I'm looking forward to is the Resident Evil 4 remake. That's gonna be really fun. I'm gonna get it as soon as I can. Play it as soon as I can. Here you go. So we got our cat fire here. And... Is this the one? Yes, I am using the right layer. And so, you know, using all the stuff we learned from earlier, it fades closer to the top, and then I'm going to harden some edges right here. So like this one, I'm going to harden that. And then I'm going to add splintering fire to make it interesting. Yeah, it was supposed to be wings like from earlier, but... I really like the cat cat idea from earlier. <laughs> and I gotta see. Yeah, Hades. I've never played Hades, but I know there's like a sequel coming out. It's part two. I know lots of people are looking forward to that one. And add another one. Or I guess speaking of elementals, like, uh, have you guys seen that one Pixar movie, Elementals? Like, what do you guys think about that one? I'm curious. Because I really like the concept of it. Bloop. Bam. Bloop. I'll add it on the side here, maybe. Yeah, because lots of people are saying they don't like it because it's too, like, bright-looking in, like, a distracting way. Which I could sort of see, to be honest. And fire... Fireboy and Water Girl. Yeah, Fireboy and Water Girl, but Fire Girl and Water Boy. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like I need to see more trailers from the movie because they've only really shown the the teaser. Maybe this time the splinter is right here. Maybe right here, actually. There. I'm gonna draw a nice shape. Just like that. And then I'm gonna use my brush to soften up the tip a little. 
just like that. Okay, that looks better actually. <laughs> and then I think I'm gonna clean up the the shading a little bit in my character, and then I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it a stream right here. Or maybe there. And I kinda wish I did not merge it so early. Because I don't know what color it was. Things like this color. Because now I gotta add like a flame right there. Doop, doop. That looks amazing. Thank you. Oh, no, Celis. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I like Garbaggio. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing Garbaggio. It's very cute. What's the best way to improve your art? Um. Observing is always the best. Like, learn how to observe, right? Because you could be like, okay, uh, the arm is like a cylinder. Okay, that's good observation. But then you could try to think like, okay, what is the cylinder made of, right? Like, what kind of muscles are there? So that's how you expand. Like, starting off, that's good to start off. But then you should be observant. And you should try to figure out why things are the way they are. So that would help a lot. Because you'd be surprised at how much self-learning you actually do compared to learning in a class. Because yeah, it's true. It's important to learn some, uh, some stuff. But the biggest improvement is when you learn something and then you apply it yourself. You know? Doop, doop, doop. <laughs> Art imitates life. Alright. See ya. Au revoir. It's okay. It's all just about almost time to end as well. But I really want to clean up this drawing. Because right now, it's looking a little messy. To be honest. So I'm going to clean up gonna blend the shapes a little this one yeah because I don't really want to rely too much on the the layer modes I just put it there for for help but then afterwards I will put my own personal touch to it so like this like right now I'm gonna put a golden edge on to right here onto the object oh thank you for the super chat ah uh, so cute thanks for the the super sticker sue jamming very nice <laughs> yeah and i always really appreciate you know regulars like sue jamming always here it's always nice to see familiar faces and yeah it really helps support the channel you know, help us make free stuff. Because it is fun. I do want to keep this going for as long as we can. It's super fun being with you guys. Hi! Welcome, Boomhammer. I love the Boomhammer from uh, said game. <laughs> you like it here? Well, I'm glad. I like it here as well. You guys make it so fun. Yeah, welcome Boomhammer. You know, for me, uh, Boomhammer, I'm more of a Blades of Mercy type guy. <laughs> first time you thought, first time you saw it. Word. I mean, I did do a run where, as soon as I got access to the DLC, I like ran to it and got the Boomhammer, and then I played the whole game with it. It was really fun. <laughs> But yeah, see ya. If I was using Blender, well, thank you. That means it's like 3D looking, my art. Which I try my best to, you know. I do want to have like a 3D shape to all my art. <laughs> what game is this? This is an original character. We're learning how to render fire. 
And we had a little poll, basically, before the stream. And what won was a mage casting fire. And this is what we came up with. So we came up with like a cat mage. And, you know, she's casting magic. Just like that. And I'm cleaning up. I'm cleaning up the sketch because I do want it to look all nice, right? Before I call it a day on the stream. <laughs> what game? Oh, yeah. This is a game I cannot mention. But you can probably figure it out. Did I name this character? No. What do you guys want to name this character? I always leave the naming up to chat. So what do you guys think would match her? Hmm. Zooming out all the way. Trying to see what else I could change. Yes. <laughs> I know, I wish it was available in more. Such a good game. Infer cat. <laughs> Inferno cat. It sounds like a Pokemon name, like Infernape. Uh, this one is a little bit too bright. So maybe. Tone it down, or actually, I'll add it. So I'll just add the brightness. Like that. Like that. And. Cat? <laughs> hmm. I should try to think of names myself. Hmm. Feline. <laughs> I want to do something with feline. Feline. Mm. I don't know. It's always <laughs> it's always so hard for me to name OCs. You can tell. Even in the OC stream from last time, everybody keeps asking, like, "Yeah, try to give a name for your OC," and I I just come to a standstill. It's too hard. Then I'm gonna add. Nice, nice gold, gold shine to the trimming. Or maybe darker. Doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. Felicity, Pyro Kitty. Hmm. Felicity? <laughs> I mean, I guess so. Felicity is nice. I dub thee Felicity. And more gold. Gold trimmings. And let's see. Because this is pretty much just the finishing touches. I've uh, explained everything I wanted to explain for fire. And I hope you guys uh, learned a lot. You know, because fire, it's not just something that lights up the place. You know, I think of it as a shape. Think of it as something that could really complement the... Complement your characters, you know, like this one. It's surrounded by flame. And it's an... In such a way that it doesn't really get in the way, right? It complements your character. And I even drew like little flame floaties in the back. So yeah, that's how you guys should think of fire. Or at the very least, how I think of fire, you know? There. 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 And this one. Alright, so what do you guys think? I think this is about it. Because I could keep... <laughs> Honestly, I would keep going like forever if you let me. But what do you guys think so far? What about a last name? Oh, that'd be too hard. 
Yeah, Ash is another nice name, honestly. Oh. He links. Yeah, just so you guys know, I will never pick a name I think. Because you guys keep thinking of better names. Felicity Ashen Cat Slime. Amazing. And yeah. I guess before I formally wrap up, you know, I hope you guys learned a lot about how to learn fire, or at least my way of doing it, right? And don't worry, Jessie will be back next week for her stream on Friday. I'm just filling in for her, and I hope you guys wished her a, uh, a nice break while she was here earlier. And I guess next Sunday, I will be streaming again. I will be doing a stream on how to draw robots, so look forward to that. And before I go, I do want to mention we have summer camp. We're going to have summer camp in Wing Canvas. So we're going to have lessons every day, twice a day. So if you guys want to join, you know, feel free to look at our site and our streamers are actually going to be the teachers. So like me, Jesse, Josh, Vanessa, and uh, let's see, what else are my notes? What else am I missing? But uh, other than that, I think that's about it. That's about it for today. And I hope you hope you guys had fun. So yeah, see ya, see you on Sunday, I guess. So yeah, bye, bye bye.